Yeah, I think we should uh, go back uh, to the very beginning uh, of what we call now Western Balkans. It's the collapse of Yugoslavia. The collapse of Yugoslavia uh, led to a, a dismantling of a, a state and uh, led to a, an order based on war and ethnic cleansing. And uh, after the Kosovo War, the big question was, what will be the peaceful political order for the region? And the only answer was Europe. And I think this is still uh, the valid position. <coughs> this region belongs to Europe. There is a debate about whether Turkey belongs to Europe, yes or no. You might have different positions, but there is no question about that the Western Balkans is Europe and must belong to Europe. Or we will pay, as the European Union, a high price in the long term if we uh, do not act properly and fulfill our promises. I think this should be understood that uh, the European Union at the moment is in a complicated situation. They have uh, serious uh, controversies inside, Hungary, Poland. Uh, they have uh, to digest the Brexit. It's an ongoing debate between the UK and uh, Brussels, and especially the threat of uh, uh, coming back of uh, violence in, uh, on the Irish uh, island, in Northern Ireland. So there's a lot of uh, challenges inside the European Union. Uh, this is blocking the enlargement process, not only in the Western Balkans, but everywhere. So enlargement is not, uh, the situation is not in favor of enlargement. But uh, I think uh, we should also reflect about the possibilities in the future. Um, Europe is uh, in a situation geopolitically where the question what will happen to Europe uh, in these new uh, uh, global setting, uh, rivalry or maybe conflict uh, between the two superpowers of the 21st century, uh, the United States and uh, China. Uh, what will be our role? And the first answers are, uh, on a more theoretical level, uh, strategic um, uh, autonomy. Uh, so uh, this is an opportunity for the Western Balkans, because what does that mean, strategic autonomy? Uh, I can only recommend to the leaders of the states here in the region to address this issue, not only in Brussels, but also in Paris and Berlin. What does that mean? This means uh, to create a, a long-term st stable order of peace and prosperity in the Western Balkans. Or it's only a theoretical fantasy. Uh, I think uh, Europe is responsible for its direct neighborhood, but this is more than neighborhood. That's part of Europe, the Western Balkans. And uh, this should be addressed, and uh, I sense an opportunity for a restart of the accession process. And secondly, uh, many times mentioned, as better you are doing at home, as easier it will be to convince the Europeans to move on with the accession process. And uh, I think this offers a great opportunity uh, for the next future. We must work together, not only for the Western Balkans, but for enlargement as a principle of stability and peace in Europe. It, we need a, a fresh start, a restart uh, for the enlargement process. And uh, this should be connected with the question of strategic autonomy, because this will open a door in the mindset of the Europeans. So I'm not pessimistic. It should be quite clear. The Western Balkans belongs to Europe, period. Secondly, we must work very hard to use all the benefits of uh, the accession process in economic terms and in political and social terms. And thirdly, allow me to be frank, it's not wise to open the door for non-European actors like China. There may, might be a short-term benefit, but in the long term, it's seen as a turn away from the European integration process. So it will weaken the European integration process. 
In, instead, the other side should be to strengthen this accession process. So be careful with be part of this uh, game between China and uh, the West. This, in the middle and long-term perspective, might be pretty uh, dangerous for uh, the accession uh, to the European Union. But all in all, I think we shouldn't be pessimistic. There is a lot of reasons for optimism. We have heard it by the prime ministers. Thank you.